Hi guys, this is Connie, back for some more Connie Reads the Dogs of Winter. This is tap chapter 21 titled, The Hat. The days grew short and very cold. When the sun was shining, the glass house was warm as springtime. The puppies played and wrestled. Grandmother watched over them while little mother and Rip, Rip went out to hunt rats. But at night, the glass house turned into a house of ice. I begged and bought what I could. Perhaps I would have gotten more money if I had begged with one of the puppies, but I knew it would break little mother's heart if I took one of her children away. Lucky proved to be my good luck charm again. Lucky and my shoeless feet. It had become so cold that I wrapped them in burlap I cut with my knife and tied them with string from my ragged sweater. Still, by the end of the day, my feet were wet and frozen. As the sun faded in the gray afternoon, I hobbled to the bread shop and the butcher shop and the everything in it shop. Some days I had enough to buy bread and sausages and even a pickled egg or two. Sometimes I did not. On those days, I would swallow my shame and take the long stairs down into the belly of the train station and dig through the trash bins for discarded food. There are no children or grown-up beggars in that train station, I said to Lucky and Smoke as I nibbled at what was left of the roasted pork, shashlak. I pulled a piece of black meat from the wooden skewer and tossed it to Smoke. Perhaps they are living underground like Pasha and the rest, I said, pulling the last piece of meat from the skewer and handing it to Lucky. I licked the grease from my fingers and pulled on the gloves I had found in the wooden shed. I shivered. I was still so very hungry and tired. Back above ground, Lucky and I lay down in a weak patch of sun on top of a heat grate. Smoke drifted off to where we never knew. Lucky sighed as I rested my head on his sun-warmed belly. I reached up and touched his face. I'll get some money in a few minutes, Lucky. I closed my eyes. I just need to rest for a minute. When I awoke, my head was still resting on Lucky's side. The day had turned lead gray. Fat snowflakes drifted down, and in my hand that had laid outstretched as I slept, winked coins and rubles growing wet in the snow. Lucky and I hurried to the wooden stalls for our bread. The woman who sold the bread huddled deep in her coat. As always, a cigarette hung from her lip. And as always, she took my money and handed me the loaf of black bread without speaking. But as Lucky and, and, and I turned to leave, she said, Wait! She dug through a plastic bag, muttering to herself. She pulled something from the bag. Here, she said. I gasped. It was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. It was a hat. I ran my fingers over and over the rows of knitted wool. Brown and black and dirty white. Thick and rough. I showed it to Lucky. See, it's just like you. It is my Lucky hat. Lucky sniffed the hat and sneezed. Don't just stand there and pet it like a dog, the bread woman said. Put it on. Carefully, I pulled the beautiful hat on my head. It came down over my forehead, covered my ears and eyes, and rested finally on the tip of my nose. The bread woman grunted. She folded the brim of the hat up to my elbows. She nodded. Better. Oh, the delicious warmth of it. My head was warm and my ears warm for the first time in weeks. I wiggled my toes in my socks and burlap sacks. They were warm, too. I smiled at the bread woman and wrapped my arms around myself. Spasibo, I said. It is the best hat ever. There could never be a better hat. The bread woman stacked her unsold bread in a box. She folded up the top of the box and then unfolded it. She pulled a loaf of bread from the box. Here, she said. Take it. But I only... But I have only enough money left to buy sausages, I said. It's too old to sell, she said, shoving the loaf of bread across the table. It's not worth the trouble to carry home. My heart soared like the firebird. Two loaves of bread and enough money left for sausages? I raced back to the glass house with Lucky. We leapt over the brick wall and ran to our home. Tonight we will eat like kings and queens, I said as we burst in the door. And we did. Two pots of gruel for grandmother rather than one, extra slices of bread and sausage for me and for the dogs. 
I lit the candles I had found in the shed and placed them in the pots. Uh, their light danced and flickered on the glass around us and above us. A fine layer of snow and ice coated the top of the glass house. The light from the candles shone through it like blankets of delicate lace. The lace of the Snow Queen, I said to the dogs, all piled and sprawled around me. Do you know the story of the Snow Queen? She was a beautiful but evil queen. She stole children who became lost and kept them in her winter lands forever, I explained. It was my favorite story for my mother to read me in the winter. Lucky thumped his tail. Rip rolled on his back, paws waving in the air. Grandmother yawned. I burrowed in the nest of dogs and stared up at the glass and ice and lace ceiling. Let's see if I can remember. Once upon a time, I began, in the land of ice and snow, there lived a queen. She was so beautiful and delicate, yet she was of ice, of dazzling silver ice, and her eyes were like twin stars and filled with endless winter. <coughs> the next morning, our little forest and our glass house were blanketed in snow. The dogs chased each other and wrestled in the clean whiteness of it. Even grandmother left the glass house and rolled with great delight, her eyes closed and her mouth smiling. Little mother did, too. A whimper and a yip came from a mound of snow. One little head popped up, then another. Oh, puppies, I laughed. The snow is too deep. We'll never find you. I put the puppies in the wheelbarrow and pushed them through the snow. Lucky and Rip chased along beside. We ran and laughed until the wheelbarrow turned over and we all went sprawling in the wet snow. Lucky and Rip licked the snow from my face. Thank you for the bath, I said. A bath. Once a week I had taken a bath. My mother would scrub my ears and my neck and my feet so hard I thought surely my skin would come off. Now you are my clean Mishka. You are no longer a smelly little bear. I took off my hat and placed it in the wheelbarrow. I scrubbed my face and my hair and my neck as hard as I could with snow. The sun was warm and the snow was cold. I took off my sweater and my pants and put them in the wheelbarrow too. I yipped and whooped as I scrubbed my body with the snow. The dogs pranced and rolled. Lucky grabbed my hat from the wheelbarrow and raced to the shed. Come back here, I cried. Just as I caught up to him, off he'd dash again, waving my hat in the air. Ripped grabbed the hat from Lucky and dashed past me. Even little mother joined in the keep away game. I laughed and laughed, chasing the dogs in our little forest, and for the first, and just for that time, we did not feel a cold in the hunger. We were a boy and his dogs playing with a hat in the snow. And that's the end of chapter 21. Be careful with that and enjoy. Please and thank you, and I will see you for the next installment. Bye.